Welcome to Natural Born Talents. Today's subject, how to contact your ancestors. For a long time I wanted to make this video, but was reluctant because the matrix is very tricky. It's full of all kinds of beings that lie, that cheat, that manipulate. So if I didn't make this properly, I could accidentally teach you how to summon a fallen angel, a demon, the devil, or some other corrupt ancestor that isn't trying to help you, but is actually trying to harm you, usually by enslaving you within the matrix. Now I can say this, one of the biggest problems I see within the matrix is technology. And not technology itself, but the misuse of technology. Most of you have probably noticed that when you start to talk to somebody about something serious, their phone will ring and totally interrupt the conversation, maybe even destroy it. Other things that I have seen are people being enslaved by a computer at their home, for example. These two devices, the phone and the computer, that are connected to the internet, these devices are very destructive for the individual's psyche when they're trying to connect to their ancestors or higher beings or something better to enhance their lives and the lives of people around them. So if you want to become a better channeler to beings outside of your psyche, the very first thing you need to do is be aware that these two devices, more than anything else, will interfere with you channeling with anything but the darkest parts of the matrix. Therefore, if you can limit its use in your daily lives, I highly recommend that you do so. Things like being on the computer before you go to bed, or looking at your phone when you don't need to. In other words, when you're using technology as a source of entertainment, or a source of killing time, you probably would be better off turning off those devices and try meditation, or some other practice that would allow you to see beyond the matrix. Now for me, there were many things that I tried. Some of them worked and some of them did not. Some of them led to demons. Some of them led to fallen angels. Some of them led to my ancestors. And so on and so forth. Children seem to be very close to their ancestors. When I play or work with them, I can see that their ancestors are always requesting to me to make sure their kids have a good time because they instinctively know that the more children can play and enjoy life, it's less likely they become a baby soul or an egotist. Less likely they will be corrupted by the matrix. And during my childhood, I could often hear my ancestors behind me laughing on how ridiculous the matrix really is. Quite a joke indeed. But as I got older, the other things that I practiced that helped me see even further beyond the constant harassment from the matrix was of course martial arts, zazen meditation, creative visualization, tantra yogas, a book I once read called Ask Your Angel. That led to something very nasty indeed. I actually summoned some of the archangels that were moralists and they quickly showed me they do not work for humanity, they work against it. And they work hand in hand with the decadent beings such as Satan. But again, that's part of the matrix, how the matrix works. If you've ever seen the cartoons where you have an angel on one side of a person's ear and the devil on the other side of a person's ear trying to convince the individual one thing or another, you get the idea. But the moralistic angels and the devil and other dark beings don't work the way ancestors do. Ancestors are very, very different. And that's the way to compare the two influences. Now there's one other experience that I had that helped me see even further than what my ancestors were trying to get to my psyche. And that was of course the near death experiences that I had that actually pulled my psyche and soul out of the matrix to see what's really going on and the mistakes that I was making in order to try to correct them. Now I wouldn't say that you need to do this in order to get your life in order or to get it in the right path that you're supposed to be on. It's too extreme. It's too painful. But on the other hand, if you can reach out to your ancestors and sort of try to figure out what is interfering with your life that doesn't help you or help the people around you and what you can do to advance yourself, 
then I encourage you to do all kinds of different meditations, spiritual practice, even prayer if you can, to see if you get a reply. Ancestors work very subtly. They will introduce things into your life that will improve you and the people around you. And that's key. They're not trying to make you a goody two-shoe like the moralistic angels might. And they're not trying to get you to do decadent things like the devil might. They're trying to get you to see that the matrix is extremely limited and there's much more to you as an individual and the universe as a whole. Angels will say things like, oh, we're all connected to the one being and we're all here with brotherly love or sisterly love and all of this kind of nonsense when that is actually not true. It's true within the matrix. If you're in the matrix, you probably want to do good because it helps the matrix as a whole. There's nothing wrong with that. But ancestors are very individualistic beings and you as an individual outside of the matrix are also a very individual being. And this is where the key comes in because the baby souls are not individualists, they're conformists. And this is the problem with the internet, phones and computers. They're all trying to conform you to their needs and their needs are extremely destructive, limited and hamper spiritual growth. And that's the biggest problem we're facing since the 1990s though some could argue since the television was invented, and that's sort of true too for some people. So while the internet can be useful at times, generally speaking, it is more destructive than it is good. The key to spot that is if you're playing games too much on the internet, if you're spending too much time on social media, if you're spending too much time on YouTube or these other platforms that feed all kinds of information and misinformation. It's, it's designed to confuse you, not help you. And as far as politics is concerned, you can see that since the 1990s or even a little bit later, especially very recently, technology is being pushed to absolutely destroy the psyche of weak-minded people. And that's why you have all this insanity surfing within the matrix. But that doesn't mean you have to be a part of it. And this is where you want to get in contact with your ancestors to try to get them to show you a lifestyle that will serve your purpose and your loved ones at the same time. Easier said than done, of course. The trick is, is to look for the subtle hints. They will bring it into you. Things that are positive, things that are good. If you feel drained after being on the computer too long, that's obviously because you're being used by the matrix. If you feel happy, light, loving, playful, or these other things, it's probably because you're closer to your ancestors than you realize. Now, once you get sensitive enough or empathic enough, you will know when your ancestors are close and when a baby soul is close. Baby souls will always use dark angels, demons, the devil, whatever, to get their way their children. And once you understand that and see that, you will realize that your ancestors probably find them very amusing indeed and silly, but can be very destructive as well. And your loving ancestors don't want to see you destroyed. They want you to see you get through your matrix game, come out and go back to where your origins of your soul reside. So that being said, when you try all these techniques, meditation, creative visualization, martial arts, yoga, any of these naturally wonderful spiritual techniques, if you hear anything that is destructive, selfish, negative, well, it's obviously part of the matrix and it's coming from the matrix. Anything that you see loving, playful, light, joyful, or any of these other things, it's obviously coming from your ancestors. And I know that's a very simplistic way of putting it, but that is how it works. It's very simple in one way in theory, but very tricky in another way in practical practice. So the best thing you can do is on a daily basis, train yourself, be aware. When you get up in the morning is the first thing that you do is to turn on your phone, is to meditate, is to run to your computer. What is it that you think of the first thing when you get up in the morning? And that will tell you where your psyche is being pulled. If you run to your phone or to your computer, you're obviously being manipulated by the matrix. Now that doesn't mean that you're a bad person or that you're not getting it. It means that the forces around you are strong 
and you might want to start pulling away from them. Now I could point this out for the same thing as drugs or anything else that is addictive. The point is, is that the matrix is full a lot of negative things at this time that are trying to pull you deeper into the inferno for one reason or another. Your ancestors do not want to see you destroyed. So some of the things that you can do in order to move closer to your ancestors is practice things that are healthy for you and others. My ancestors in my case had brought down Celtic dance for the kids. This was a lot of fun. They also taught me some other things that the Druids used to practice that were very close to nature. Now each one of you listening to this have different ancestors and some are going to be closer to you than others. Some ancestors are actually going to be against you. But the good loving ones, the ones that want to play and love and nurture you, are also very real. So the first step you could take is to go look in your lineage, your family tree. What kind of ancestry do you have? Once you discover that, look at each culture that they come from. Look at what they practice. That will tell you a lot about yourself. Once you see that, you might want to look deeper into the culture of what they practice and try practicing some of those things. See if you like it. If you do, you may have a match. Now again, once you start to do this, the matrix will start to try to pull you back into computers, phones, the internet, social media, and the like, because that's where all the clone souls go. That's where all the people who have not developed spiritually and are really quite shallow in a lot of ways. And this is what you want to move away from because you won't develop anything in your psyche or soul that is useful for anything in the universe outside of the matrix. Now some people in the matrix will function quite well within the matrix and not be corrupted by it. There are many reasons for this, but it basically boils down to the level of their soul and the need to experience the matrix just on a very superficial level. They don't need to fight the matrix, so to speak. But those are kind of rare. Most of the people within the matrix will move along the matrix to a certain pace and at some point or another they're going to say the matrix no longer serves you and it's time for you to move on. But to move on from the matrix, you have to make up for the mistakes that you made within the matrix in order to be allowed to leave. And this is where your ancestors come in. They will encourage you to start practicing the things you did in another life, or the things that they practice now, or things that they'll practice in the future. Because those beings have already been through this. They're here to guide you through it to make sure you get out on the other side. But the matrix is pulling very hard these days, so you might want to make an extra effort to see what your purpose in life is all about. And of course the baby souls have surrendered their will to the matrix, so they will never come out, and that's the problem with the matrix. They're a real pain. Nobody knows what to do with them. The other thing you may want to realize is that if your ancestors don't answer right away, don't worry because they're waiting for a timing for you to grow in a certain way. They're waiting for their moment. They're waiting for you to see what the matrix is all about, for your consciousness to reach to a level that is strong enough for them to work with. And they also, of course, want you to experience the matrix as thoroughly as you can so you get tired of it and want to leave it, which I know many of my listeners are already at that point. So once you realize who your ancestors are, start practicing some of their techniques within the matrix, and you've discovered which practices suit you, you can start taking those practices and applying it in your daily routine. And this is what's really helpful for not only you, but also the people around you. And you can be very creative with this. You can do anything with this. You can teach children how to dance, what your ancestors used to dance. You can teach martial arts that your ancestors used to practice, or yoga, or any of these things. You can make coffees, or cakes, or local foods for other people that are unique or unusual for people to enjoy, to learn. You can look at the smallest things and share it with others for them to enjoy life. Once you start that, you can expand on it 
until your daily routine no longer is staying at home in front of the phone and computer worrying about life, but is actually interacting with life, especially the way your ancestors used to. If you start practicing this, they'll start dropping more and more hints about your life, things that they like to do, things that you like to do in another life, and so on and so forth, and you can move forward with that. But again, the matrix will come along with something negative about that or something destructive and you want to avoid it the best you can. Nobody's perfect in this game. You never will be. You never meant to be. Because that's how the matrix is designed. But you can advance yourself, spiritually grow. And to my ancestors, this is extremely important. We don't care for the matrix and we don't want to stay in it. So we want to experience it and leave it. And even the angels are pointing this out. By making the world so insane, a lot of people who are loving beings within the matrix want to leave it. But the other ones who are following the insanity within this world obviously want to stay. And that's where the transition comes in, in this whole game. The angels are trying to point out to all of us, the ones that rely on the matrix to exist within the universe and the ones that are ready to leave it for something freer. So in conclusion, if you want to channel to your ancestors, the best advice I can give you is start looking into your past, your family, your origins, the best you can. Try these spiritual techniques with caution. There are a lot of beings out there with a lie in your consciousness and misguide you in a lot of ways. But again, that's part of the game. You have to figure out what is suitable for your psyche and the people around you and find a happy existence that allows you to experience life more than you experience the matrix and again that is key and then from there when you passed that will tell you you've probably finished everything you needed to finish within the matrix and can move on to something higher which is something you're probably going to want to do because the matrix is considered one of the lowest forms of existence throughout the universe. Now a lot of people do come here just to experience it, but a lot of people do get stuck in it. And this is of course what we're seeing unfold as the world unveils the hidden insanity that's always been there, but is no longer serving its purpose for the people who want to move on. Well that's all I have for this video. If you have any specific questions on how to contact your ancestors, please leave it in the comments section below and I'll be happy to answer. But I will caution you, you do have to be very careful what you listen to once your consciousness is open. My ancestors who were druids, witches and the like, and I mean white witches not the dark ones, knew how to do this centuries ago. But since the days of the matrix, many of those people have been led away from our practices and more towards dark practices. So this is something you want to be very careful with. When you're channeling and you start hearing voices in your head or you start getting feelings within your psyche that don't seem right, well, you've contacted something that is probably going to manipulate you in a wrong direction. Your inner instinct should tell you what is right and wrong, and this is something else you may want to practice. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in the next one.